Hello and welcome to Let's Get Quilting. So my name is Maureen and I am a quilter. I am making this show to help you learn how to make a quilt. We are going to make a sampler quilt and I thought this is an easy quilt to make. It, it shows you different techniques on how to cut out fabric, how to sew fabric together, and eventually how to put the blocks together. This quilt can be made either into a wall hanging, it could be made into a lap quilt, or it could be made into a full-size bed quilt, depending on how many blocks you want to make. So that is up to you, and when we get going and started, you'll see that it'll all come together. I have been a quilter for many years, and I've made many quilts. And let me say that there's nothing better than this wonderful smiley face someone gives you when you give them a quilt. It's just, it's a wonderful feeling, and I want all of you to experience that also. So, I thought we would walk through all of the different components of putting together a quilt, from buying the fabric, to cutting the fabric, and sewing the fabric together. Please don't be intimidated by this process of making a quilt. It's really very simple once we break it down into all of the components. I know that a lot of people bought sewing machines or took their old sewing machines out of the closet and had them refurbished in order to make masks for this pandemic. And first of all, I want to say thank you all of you that did that. I'm sure that it was a great help to a lot of people and it saved probably a lot from getting sick. And that's what that was all about. Um, so now that we have the masks made, what else do we do with these sewing machines? Well, we make a quilt. And that's where this show is going to come in. So, um, I thought the first thing I would do is show you the three components that make up a quilt. And um, this is obviously on a small scale. But the first the components that we have are the top of the quilt. Let me just zoom in so I can have you see this. So it's the top of the quilt, pretend this is a whole quilt, and then we have the batting, and then we have the backing of the quilt. So all three of these components put together and sewn together make a quilt. So now that we know what a quilt is made of, we're going to find all the components in which to make that quilt come together. The, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the fabric. Where to buy fabric. There are three places that you can buy fabric. One is your local quilt store. Secondly is online. And third is a hobby store. I myself buy, I would say, 95% of my fabric at a local our local quilt stores. There are still lots of local quilt stores around and I am a big proponent of supporting small businesses. Um, online is another way to buy fabric and you can pretty much buy anything that you see at the quilt store online. I myself like to go into the quilt stores and see the colors and touch the material, but that's just me. Um, the third is your hobby stores, um, and those are certainly fine to buy your fabric also. What you want to find a fabric that is 100% cotton with a high thread count. And normally you can always buy these at your local fabric stores. Um, so, that's usually where I buy mine. For this particular project, the sampler quilt, you will need between two to four different types of color fabrics. And you can either buy these as coordinating fabrics or you can buy them, you can have scrappy ones, whatever is your pleasure. 
You will probably need between one to two yards of each color. Normally when I go into a quilt store, I find a focal fabric such as this one, and I'll show you this up close. I can get the zoom. And I'll, sh um, I'll have a focal fabric. Okay. And then I put two to three color fabrics along with it. So I'll pick out this one, and then I'll pick out two to three other fabrics whoops, that go along with it. And these will become, this is my focal fabric, and these are my coordinating fabrics. Now I would um, sometimes pick them out in the same line as a designer has a line of fabric, or sometimes I just walk around the store and find one that would go with my focal fabric. Um, that's a personal preference. So once I have my fabric, then I bring it home, and now what do I do with it? Well, there are two schools of thought on this. One is that you bring the fabric home, you wash, dry, and iron it, and fold it like it was on the bolt. The second is, is that you don't do anything. When you bring it home, you just start cutting out your pattern. There is a starchening agent that the manufacturer puts on the fabric so that when you see it on the bolt in the store, there's no wrinkles and it stands up very nicely, but it does have a little bit of a stiffness to it. I prefer myself to wash that away. And so that's why I wash, dry, and iron my fabric first, and then I fold it, and then I can see it on the shelf and know that I have a project when, I, when I'm ready. I tend to buy fabric that I fall in love with at the store, and I tend to buy the fabric uh, and then find a pattern that will easily fit that, pat, that fabric combination that I've bought. Some people buy the pattern first, and buy the required fabric. And that's a, certainly a great way to do it. I got myself in the habit of doing it the opposite way. And you know, it just works for me. Whatever works for you is perfectly fine. So for this project, you'll need about one to two yards of each color fabric. And I'd say you probably need three to four colors. And you can buy them as coordinating uh, colors, or you can buy them as uh, scrappy. Whatever um, you know you you happen to pick is probably going to be just great. Um, and don't worry, whatever leftovers you have, we will be able to use them in a scrappy quilt. And I will show you an example of a scrappy quilt in a little bit. Um, and, you know, those are fun, too, because you get to use up all your scraps, and then you remember, like, oh, I used this one to give to this person, and I used this one to give to that person, and that's kind of a fun way to remember, to be honest with you. I've made many scrappy quilts, and they turn out beautiful. Um, so, the next thing I thought we should talk about is the um, equipment needed to make and cut out the, the quilt. Um, there is, <clears throat> excuse me, three things that I think are the most important. The rotary cutter, the rulers, and a mat. Um, and those are ones that we're gonna talk about. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is the rotary cutter. Now the rotary cutter came into being, um, well, quite a few years ago now, and let me just say that it has been a godsend. We no longer have to cut our fabric out by a pair of scissors. And, you know, whenever you're using scissors, material starts wobbling and, you know, you don't get the precision. So this rotary cutter has really helped streamline that. The rotary cutter comes in a variety of different sizes and depending on what project you're using will 
depend on what rotary cutter you use. The one I typically use is a 60 millimeter. Um, this one, it's, it's very large. Now it does come in different, like I said, different sizes. And over the years, I've bought many of them. Um, and, and really, it depends on, sometimes if they're on sale. Uh, it depends on if they're, I'm using a different pro uh, project. I might need a smaller one. But normally, for, e for fabric that I'm making a quilt, I'll use the large one. The one thing that you want to always remember with the rotary cutter, this is a blade. It's a very sharp blade. And the one thing that you want to make sure is that every time you use the rotary cutter, you close the blade. So every time you use it, make sure that you snap that blade closed. And I say this because you don't want to nick your fingers, you don't want to drop it on your toes. Um, I, I've nicked my own finger uh, before, I almost took the top right off. And I know people that have uh, dropped it on their toes and it has gone through uh, a pair of shoes. These are very sharp. You want to um, only use a rotary cutter on fabric. You don't want to use a rotary cutter on paper or cardboard. And even though it looks like a pizza cutter, you don't want to use it on a pizza. So we only want to use it on fabric. And we always want to use a sharp blade. Um, and you will know that your blade is getting dull by when you start to cut your fabric and it starts to make like um, skips in your cutting, then you'll know to change your blade. And um, so, and I, I can't tell you how often you'd need to change it because it certainly depends on how much fabric you're cutting. But they do last quite a while. And you can always get them on sale, so even better. Um, the second thing that I thought we would talk about is rulers. Now rulers play an important part in quilting. Um, they play the part of holding our fabric steady so that we can use our rotary cutter. They also measure fabric and um, maybe cut out a design. There are many types of rulers and I have quite a few as every quilter does. And these are just the type of fa uh, rulers, just as of the rotary cutter. Just the type of brand that I started with years ago and that I'm comfortable with as I brought them. Um, so, the rulers, um, you could get away with, in the beginning, I would recommend a large ruler, the width of the fabric so that it's easy to cut your fabric with. Um, and then as time goes on, you can add to your collection as I have when I've needed one. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the mat. And this mat is probably an eighth of an inch thick. It's a durable, not really sure, plastic, I'm not really sure. Um, flexible um, mat that you put on your cutting surface to protect your table and also to make your rotary cutters cut smoother. It is, um, there are gradations on the mat and you will see that the mat has, um, it'll be one through, tw mine says one through 24 on the vertical and it says one through 36 on the horizontal. And there's also markings on the mat as you can see and a lot of times I use those to be able to line up my fabric so that I can cut it um, but the most important thing is that it's easy to use for the rotary cutter and it um, saves your surface now I have a very large mat I do have quite a few other ones and but I have a large surface in which to cut my fabric Whatever, type, whatever surface you have to cut, 
you will be able to find a mat to be able to fit that size. Um, the one thing I would say is don't leave the mat out in direct sunlight because it can get whopped. Um, and so they are expensive um, and we don't want to damage them. They do last a long time. Uh, the last one I had, I probably had for almost 10 years. This one I got probably about a year and a half ago. And so they, you know, they hold up for their money. So now that we've talked about the rotary cutter, the ruler, and the mat, it's time now to cut out our fabric. So the first block that I thought we would tackle is the nine, what they call the nine patch block. And this is a block made out of three and a half inch strips sewn together and then uh, cut out and sewn again to make the nine patch. Now depending on where you place your uh, fabric, you can have two different nine patches. You can have one with a light center and one with a dark center. And there is a difference and it's kind of nice. Um, so I thought that we would cut out that. So for this particular block you're going to need a light fabric and a dark fabric. And um, I will show you how to cut out the fabric. So with this I picked a very light pat pattern and it has a little bit of color into it and then I picked a dark so that we have contrast. Okay, so that's the light and the dark Oops. so that we have some contrast. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do to be able to start cutting the fabric precisely is that we're going to square off the rough edge. And when I say this, I mean this edge here where um, you have gotten a cut from the fabric store or from off of the bolt. So the fabric, as I said, is probably this is 42 inch wide. And when we, we fold it after we've ironed it or as it comes up, just like it would come off the bolt, and so we're going to measure from the fold to the salvage. Now the first thing we're going to do is square off the fabric so we're uh, working with a straight edge. So this is where your rulers are going to come in handy. Now I use a large ruler and my long ruler and I use these to square off the fabric. So I move my large ruler over as long as close to the raw edge as I can. I mean we're always trying to save fabric. And then we take this square ruler and we place it right on the fold of the fabric. And in doing so it lines up this large ruler. So now we have a straight edge that is um, what we call squaring off the fabric. So what we're going to do is we take this one away, we hold our ruler tightly to the fabric, and we get our rotary cutter, we open the blade, and we start to make a cut. Now usually what I'll do is I'll either put my hand on the halfway through to the ruler, or I'll either put it at the edge and then move my hand up. Um, that's just a personal preference, whatever you get used to. So, we're going to cut. Again, close the blade. Now, this is um, a nice straight edge that now we can measure our three and a half inch strips off of. So we're going to use this edge and going to measure three and a half inches inward. So I'm going to take my ruler and three and a half inches is right here. And I'm going to line that up 
on my nice new straight edge at three and a half inch mark. And again, I'm going to take my rotary blade, I'll open the blade, and I'll make my slice. Close the blade. Now here we have our first strip of fabric for our first block. And I will repeat this process for the um, dark purple that we have um, to make the block. So again, I'm going to have to square off the fabric. As you see, it has a rough edge. And I will square off this fabric. And usually you can get uh, two to three strips of fabric cut before you have to square it off again because we're only human and our hand is going to move a little bit each time and so we want the perfect edge to be able to um, cut our fabric. As otherwise you'll have pieces that are a little bit too big or maybe a little bit too small and then your quilt itself will be off. So again we're going to um, bring the, our long ruler over to the edge as far as we could. And then we're going to take our, and I lost it, our square. And we're going to line it up at the edge or the fold of our fabric. And as you see, when I line it up, my long ruler will move a little bit because that's, it's making it now a perfect straight line. So we're going to use our rotary cutter and cut one straight line. And now I have a nice straight line in order to cut the rest of my strips. And again, I'm going to line it up so it's three and a half inches on the ruler. As you notice, it's one, two, three and a half. Hold my ruler down open my blade and cut. And now we have our up oh, two strips cut. And these two strips were we will use to make our nine inch finished block of the nine pack. So this is where we're going to end for this episode. Um, I've shown you the um, equipment that you'll need to cut out your fabric. We talked about buying the fabric and what to do when you brought it home. And now you've cut out your first four strips, too light, too dark, for the nine patch block. And next episode we will sew them together and make your first block. And talk about the second block. Also in the next episode we will talk about sewing machines and a little bit of maintenance on them and um, you know basic how to use. Um, I I'm sure you all are familiar with your sewing machines. You've been making masks. You're fine. So that's the end of this episode. Uh, the next episode will be in two weeks and we'll sew the uh, strips together to make the nine patch block and we'll also talk about the sewing machine uh, certain just um, basic ma maintenance that I particularly do and hopefully that'll help you keep your sewing machine running and smooth forever. The other thing I want to say is I want to thank the Lemonster Access TV for helping me produce this show and allowing me to use their equipment. They've been very nice and thank you very much. So I will see you in two weeks when we get quilting.